Um, I'm Michael Osman of Gray Scott Gadgets, and uh, this talk was going to be a surprise talk, um, and it was going to be a surprise talk yesterday morning, um, but uh, now it's a, an even bigger surprise for me, especially. Um, this is uh, our H2HC badge. Yay. Uh, this is what our H2HC badge was supposed to be. <laughs> This is actually a, 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 just the printed circuit board uh, before it was assembled, before it had the components soldered on. Um, this, this picture was emailed to me by, uh, by the manufacturer, and uh, I never actually saw it with the components soldered on because, <laughs> uh, because uh, well, we don't have them. Um, so anyway, we made 400 of these, and uh, has a picture of Brazil on the back. And, and the idea of, of this badge was to celebrate H2HC's 10th anniversary. Uh, and Rodrigo and I had talked about this for like a year and a half. We've been talking about, oh, we're going to have a, an electronic badge for the, for the H2HC 10th anniversary. And um, so uh, this is the last picture I had of them in the box, ready to be shipped. Uh, and these are, these are the guys who have them now. <laughs> and uh, funny thing, if you, uh, if you Google, if you do a Google image search for uh, Brazilian federal police, you get a lot of images of the Mexican federal police. Uh, apparently because they're very bad people and they're in the news a lot. Uh, <laughs> but I did finally find one of Brazilian federal police. So these were seized uh, at the border. We actually had the badges shipped to Rodrigo in the US. Uh, instead of shipping them direct from the manufacturer into Brazil because Rodrigo thought, oh no, then they won't make it through customs. Um, yeah, so that didn't really work out. Um, so anyway, these guys have 400 of our badges that we're supposed to have. Um, and so let me tell you a little bit about what the badges are for, uh, the concept behind the design, and, and a little bit of the content that uh, you might be interested in that uh, unfortunately is less inter interesting since you don't have the hardware in your hands. But um, if you haven't noticed by now, uh, embedded systems are taking over the world. And in particular, <laughs> ARM CPUs are taking over the world. Um, there is a whole variety of different ARM CPUs, and they're in everything from cell phones and kind of light laptops uh, all the way down to, you know, very tiny devices. Uh, there are multiple, well, like 100 plus microcontrollers in a modern car that we're going to hear about in, in a moment. Um, they're all over the place. And this in particular is, is just a screenshot from a, a project that some of you guys might have seen. Um, it was, it, there was a, a talk given at Ohm this summer about this hard drive hacking project. And in this case, uh, somebody was, was kind of reverse engineering the microcontroller on the hard drive itself and reprogramming it. And this is an ARM Cortex M3 microcontroller, I believe, which is the exact same microcontroller uh, CPU core that I used on the H2HC badge. Uh, so these, these ARM microcontrollers are everywhere, they're in all kinds of interesting devices, and if you're somebody who has experience hacking on general purpose computers like PCs and laptops, um, but are interested in maybe starting to explore hacking on embedded systems, uh, that's, the, that's the kind of activity that we were hoping to encourage uh, with the H2HC badge, uh, to be able to get familiar with the architecture and build something or just write code for um, a, a, one of these ARM Cortex microcontrollers and have an opportunity to, to kind of get into that sort of development and hacking very easily. So hopefully many of you are familiar with the GoodFet project of Travis Goodspeed, who we heard from yesterday. The, uh, the GoodFet it was kind of the origin of this particular project for me. Um, it's a, a very use, useful kind of general purpose platform for interfacing with all kinds of digital technologies um, and uh, like digital interfaces that you can connect uh, to through a USB interface from your 
computer and control it with Python. And uh, this was a variant of the GoodFet project that I put together a few months ago, and I have it up here uh, connected to my laptop. Uh, it's officially in the GoodFet repo. It's called the GFLPC 1343, which is not a very, uh, doesn't really roll off the tongue very well. But uh, uh, so, but since my company is Great Scott Gadgets, and this is my variant of the Good Fet, I call it the Great Fet. Uh, so the Great Fet is a, a little uh, small board that connects to a computer over USB. And the main difference between it and the previous Good Fet designs is that it uses this ARM Cortex M3 microcontroller that is uh, very low cost and also very easy to interface with uh, over USB and to program over USB. It's a one-chip solution where previous GoodFet designs were uh, primarily a two-chip solution designs. So this kind of makes it smaller and, and well, not necessarily smaller, but lower cost to manufacture. And uh, it also allows us to break out a whole bunch of extra pins. Uh, and the concept of the great fit, the great fat, sorry, um, is that, like the good fit, it could be your first surface mount technology board if you wanted to build one yourself. Now, personally for me, the first surface mount soldering that I ever did was a good fit um, from a, a circuit board that Travis gave me. And it was really nice that, that I could solder it up and plug it into my laptop and blow code onto it without having to have any external hardware. So it kind of bootstraps itself. Uh, so that's one of the concepts of the Great Fet is that it has that same capability. If you solder one from scratch, you can plug it into USB and blow code onto it without any external programming hardware. It's low cost, it has more pins broken out than the previous Good Fet design. And one of the main things I wanted to do with it was create a way to be able to plug in um, expansion boards. Small expansion boards that let you do things like um, connect to a CAN bus on a, on a uh, car or connect or put a little wireless uh, transceiver chip on a little expansion board or the face dancer project that you might be familiar with that could be implemented with a, a little expansion board that's just the USB chip for the target device. So that's the concept of the, of the Great Fet. And I don't even have the code working yet to, to fully implement all those things. That's just the concept of this design. Um, and that's what we put onto the H2HC badge. The only, it was basically just the straight up Great Fret design. And uh, the only thing I added to it for the H2HC badge was a couple of buttons. A reset button and a little ISP button, an in-system programming button. And that just lets you very easily um, put the thing into its bootloader mode, uh, which makes it even easier to develop with. So uh, this was actually the first small expansion board that I made for <laughs> the Great Fed. <laughs> Turned out to be not so small. Uh, but uh, in the future, I hope to have other things that are a little bit smaller. Uh, so to, if you're interested in getting into ARM uh, microcontroller development, it's really pretty easy if you have any experience with C programming at all. Um, all you have to do is like download uh, a tool chain, and you can this is a screenshot of the official ARM toolchain for the Cortex M series microcontrollers, and you can just download a binary toolchain and add it to your path. Um, the MicroBuilder has an interesting uh, LP, LPC 1343 code base. The LPC 1343 is the exact model of the microcontroller that's on the Great Bet uh, or the H2HC badge. And this is just some sample code that you can download, compile with that toolchain. Uh, and then put, load it onto here with one command, uh, and then execute it. And I'm just going to show you that right now, um, it, just to kind of give you an idea of how easy it is to get into uh, this kind of activity. So I'm just going to bring up a little cheat sheet here. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is check and see, I've plugged in the device in bootloader mode. So if I run LSUSB, I should see an NXP device show up. There it is. And you can see that it is a uh, 
NXP LPC 13 XXI flash, and down lower is a mass storage device. So the bootloader actually implements a mass storage device, and I can mount that device if I find it. Um, it is dev SDC, and it doesn't have any partitions in its partition table, but if I just mount it directly, there's this firmware.bin file. And this is a virtual file system where we can just overwrite that firmware.bin and that loads firmware onto the device. It's that simple. Uh, unfortunately, it isn't quite that simple on platforms other than Windows because of a bug in the, <laughs> in the bootloader, but that's easily worked around with a little, a little Python script. Uh, so I've mounted that bootloader virtual device. I'm going to install a tool chain. Uh, so, looking, working from my cheat sheet over here, um, uh, instead of relying on the internet, I'm just going to use one that I've downloaded earlier and just unzip or untar this HUHC GCC. So, I'm installing this GCC ARM toolchain, and this is just a binary download. You can download and install it from source if you want, um, but it's really easy to just install this, and then all I have to do to get it working is to add to my path the bin directory that I just unpacked. And that's it. Now, I'll, now I can just go into a source directory and type make. So let's get some source. Um, or first, let's install simple flash, which is just a um, just a little, this is the workaround program for the um, the little bug in the bootloader I talked around about that just it doesn't quite work right on Linux, but it's only a few lines of Python. It comes from the Rocket Badge folks from the CCC camp a couple years ago or last year. Um, I remember whenever that was. Um, and uh, then I'm going to install my my sample code, which is in this uh, the L the, the uh, microbuilder sample code. So this is the LPC 1343 code base. And I'll just go into there, and there's just a little munging I have to do. I have to just make this little script executable. And I have to put it where the make, uh, make file will find it. And then I can just type make. And now I'm compiling code for the ARM Cortex-M3. Um, just takes a minute. And you'll notice that little script I was playing with is the last thing that the make file did. And so now I have a binary to load onto that, uh, that virtual file system. So I've, I've just completely downloaded the tool chain, the sample source code, everything I need, just type make, and boom, I have firmware that I can load on the thing. Um, and then I can run my little simple flash program, which works around that bug in the, in the bootloader. And I've just loaded the code onto the device. Now all I have to do is unplug it, plug it back in, and those of you who are sitting close enough should be able to see that the, the red LED on the little device is now flashing slowly, which it wasn't doing before. Now it's doing that because that's the code that I installed. And the code also runs a, a virtual. It runs a, a virtual serial port, and so now I'm talking to the uh, the great bet or what would have been the H2AC badge uh, over a serial interface, and I can do things like check and see its uptime. Oh, it's been up for 38 seconds. If I run it again. Now it's been up for two, 42 seconds. So this is just some sample code that you can use that implements you know, flashing the LED and a serial port that's really handy for debugging and stuff like that. And it's a nice little framework that you could use to kind of get into doing this, this programming on your own. Um, and that was the whole point of the H2HC badge, was to give, give people an opportunity to be able to do something this simple uh, with no additional hardware and just plug in the USB and start experimenting with ARM uh, microcontroller development and hopefully in the long term uh, our microcontroller exploitation. Uh, so thanks for your time. I'm sorry that uh, it didn't work out the way we planned, but 
Uh, any questions before we turn it over to Charlie and uh, Chris? Anybody? Yes? Are you coming uh, when the real badges uh, are liberated? Oh, oh, when the real badges are liberated? We don't know when or if they will be liberated. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have no idea. So, uh, you know, we'll see. If, if they do come through, I'm sure we'll, we'll make some effort to get them to people, maybe at H2HC next year, maybe, who knows? We, we don't have a plan for that. We'll see um, what, and Rodrigo would be the person to, to figure that out, most likely. Um, when and if they are liberated, uh, there will be some kind of effort to make sure that they don't just sit in a box, that people, that they get to some people who can use them. Uh, hopefully you guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyone else? No? All right. Thank you so much.